today, let's dissect a brain. But before that, where do you think your mind is located in your body? We often say someone has a warm heart. And imagine it in the chest. But in reality, all emotions are created in the brain inside your head. Not just emotions. The brain also sends commands for many body functions. Seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling, touching. It receives and processes information from all five senses. So really, the mind isn't in your chest, it's in your head. This brain, which controls nearly every function in the human body, is made up of about 100 billion neurons. These neurons are connected to each other, forming complex neural networks. Today, let's take a look at this most important organ of the body by actually dissecting a brain and observing its structure. We'll be using a sheep's brain. If you're uncomfortable with dissections, please hit the back button now. Ta-da! This is a sheep's brain. It's much smaller than a human brain, but the structure is mostly the same. However, there is one big difference between the sheep brain and the human brain. It's the position of the spinal cord. In four-legged animals like sheep, the brain and spinal cord are connected more horizontally. But because humans walk upright, our brains are positioned like this instead. Other than that, the structure is mostly the same. Let's start by touching it. Hmm, it feels a bit springy. From the top, it looks like this. This large area is the cerebrum. Looking at the sheep's cerebral cortex, the folds aren't very deep or numerous. In contrast, the human cerebral cortex has deeper and more folds which is believed to be one reason why humans are more intelligent than other animals. The cerebrum is divided into four parts. The frontal lobe at the front, the parietal lobe at the top, the temporal lobe on the sides, and the occipital lobe at the back. Each area of the cerebral cortex has its own function. We tend to think of the brain as one big lump, but in fact, it's made up of many different parts. First, the cerebrum is divided into the left and right hemispheres. At the back of the brain is a smaller brain. This is the cerebellum. And behind that is the spinal cord. The spinal cord runs through the spine, and together with the brain, they control all our bodily actions and senses. That's why they're called the central nervous system. The nerves that branch out from the brain and spinal cord to the rest of the body make up the peripheral nervous system. If we flip the brain over and look underneath, we can also see the cranial nerves, peripheral nerves that connect directly to the brain. This is the olfactory nerve, or cranial nerve 1, which handles smell. This is the optic nerve, or cranial nerve 2, and here is where they cross. There are 12 pairs of cranial nerves extending from the brain. And the part that continues down like a stem is called the brainstem. The brainstem includes the midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata. This is the midbrain. This is the pons. And this is the medulla. The nerves that connect the spinal cord to the brain pass through the brainstem and cross at the medulla. That's why the right brain controls the left side of the body, and the left brain controls the right side. We'll explain more about the brainstem's functions later, when we cut open the brain. First, let's gently cut the membrane between the two hemispheres. We see a white structure. This is the corpus callosum, a bundle of nerve fibers. When we cut it open, here it is, the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum connects the left and right brain hemispheres, allowing them to share information. Because of this, the right brain controls the left side of the body, 
the left brain controls the right side, and the corpus callosum helps them work together. In severe epilepsy cases, the corpus callosum is sometimes cut to reduce seizures. When that happens, the left and right brains become separated, and the person may no longer be able to read familiar words that appear in their left field of vision. This happens because the information from the left visual field goes to the right brain. But language processing is usually in the left brain, so the two can't communicate properly. Isn't that strange? Below the corpus callosum is a small pine cone shaped part. This is the pineal gland, which regulates our sleep cycle. This area is the diencephalon, which maintains homeostasis, keeping our body in balance. And this is the brainstem, which we mentioned earlier. The brainstem lies deep inside the brain, because it is essential for survival. It's actually more critical than the cerebrum or cerebellum. When doctors determine the difference between brain death and a vegetative state, the key is whether the brainstem is damaged. Brain death means the brainstem is damaged, so the person cannot stay alive without machines. Machines can keep the body functioning for a while, but actual recovery is impossible. In contrast, in a vegetative state, the cerebrum is damaged, but the brainstem is intact. So the person can survive on their own if they're given nutrients. If the midbrain is working properly, shining light in the eyes will cause the pupils to react. So when someone in a coma suddenly wakes up one day, that kind of miracle can only happen if the person is in a vegetative state without brainstem damage. Finally, let's look at the cerebellum you'll see a tree-like pattern. This is formed by the distribution of gray matter and white matter. In general, the brain's outer layer is gray matter, and the inner layer is white matter. So it's sometimes called the tree of life. Also, if we cut the cerebellum horizontally like this, we can clearly see the white matter inside and the gray matter outside. Gray matter is made of neuron cell bodies and dendrites. White matter is made of bundles of axons covered in myelin, which is rich in fat. That's why it looks white. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our channel. This was Fishy Science, where we explain fascinating things through science.